Hello, this is Cecil Sunkir from Hotkey.com, and I have to replace for you between Start Hill Parting and Liquid Red. What I'm going to be showing you in this PBZ is an all-in that consists around using sentries and immortals in order to take out your opponent at a time when it's extremely difficult for them to hold off the push. So what you do is you go for a Forge Fast Expand in the early game. And after you have your Forge Fast Expand set up, you lay down a Robotics Facility. And then after your Robotics Facility, you try to hide as many gateways as possible. And then, once you have a good amount of sentries and two Immortals, you can go ahead and move across the ramp, or er, move across the map right before 10 minutes, bring a probe along with you, and then proceed to have extremely good force field usage and take out your opponent. So here you can see the gateways going down. Uh, it's important to note where these place, uh, where these are being placed. These are the most inopportune, or these are like the hardest place for the opponent to scout. And there was a stalker here running around. It has five kills right now, and also the sentries as well. And what they're doing is they're pressing all the overlords out of the base, so that it's a lot harder for Rhett to actually scout this. Here you can see. Um, that uh, no sentry is even being produced right now, it's more important to produce two immortals very quickly, and you can chrono those out as fast as you can. Once you have your two immortals, then you can get a warp prism and proceed with your warp prism push, and after the warp prism, you can make one observer, and the observer will catch up with you uh, during the battle just in time to start clearing away the creep. That way, you don't have an observer for a longer period of time, just kind of sitting there not doing anything. You can see the first immortal being constructed. Note that plus one ground weapons was researched. Uh, I've also seen this push done quite often with plus one armor as well, because you do have enough time to chrono it out um, and have that finished for the push. Although for some reason party didn't get it, he probably just wasn't thinking about it. You can see the proxy biome being laid, and here right at 10 minutes, parting is on the other side of the map. Now there is a pretty big food difference, 87 food to 124. Rhett has 16 roaches, but a lot of them are just being complete, and he's engaging out in the open already. What Rhett is trying to do is bait out as many force fields as possible to start getting this energy down, so that he might be able to take care of his push. But you can see that in doing that, there's just way, way too much energy, and Rhett can't afford to lose big chunks of units like this, just to take out some sentry energy. Uh, there's also a warp prism along with the pylons. The pylons are also in part to add more supply to your push so that you can keep warping and stuff. If you have any weakened units during your push, try to load them up in your prism and then drop them and you'll see parting do that multiple times during your push. What's important to do uh, with this all-in is that you're not going to simply force field the entire army and kill it off all at once. You have to section off the Roachling army in pieces, so that way you can have an impenetrable, an, an impenetrable small subset of units only being engaged at by a small amount of the Zerg units at any given time. Because if you engage, of course, the whole Zerg army at once, you can take a, too much damage, and then you're pushing them forward. But you can see continually that Liquid Rat engages over and over and over again with smaller groups of units. And whenever he does have a sizable ball, Parting is able to split it up because of the run zone. And now, uh, Rhett has just lost way too much stuff. You can see the resources lost tied here. And this disparity is why Rhett has lost this first game. Here I have the second replay with Startail Parting and Liquid Rhett. Parting will be doing the same build, but this time I'm going to go a little bit slower through the replay so that we can see the specifics of how to execute it. So, 9 pylon, chrono boost once, chrono boost twice, and then we'll see exactly what he does in a moment. He sees the pool go down right on, uh, right at 2 minutes, which is what your opponent's pool should be going down if they're playing standard. And then he does a 15 nexus. Does not overturn another probe, 
immediately places down a forge. This way he can get his cannon on time in the event wings start billowing across the map. After the forge is laid, he looks like he's chrono boosting some probes. One chrono boost is what he did. Then he got a pylon and a gate or a cannon and a gateway. And if these wings were to dive bomb straight across the map, I'm sure Parting would be able to just place one more gateway temporarily to let the pylon or the cannon finish, and then the wings would be all but thwarted. After the gateway, two more assimilators. Now it's time to hardcore chrono your nexuses. Right when you have two full lines of probes mining at your main, that means that it is time to rally both of your nexuses to your natural expansion. And of course, right when the gateway finishes, you need to have your cyber core. Cyber core should be going down red or around uh, 430. Immediately order warp gate from it. He's getting a fast stalker to clear away any lings, push away overlords, um, push away overlords in the main. That way he can put his gateways down and have a better chance of them not being scouted. Here's a small trick that you can do with your nexuses in order to saturate your mineral line at your nat faster. Once you rally them, put your nexus in your main to the closest mineral patch and then the uh, nexus in your natural to one over on this side. So that way you'll have a saturation occur on these and then on these separately from the two nexuses. And it gives you a little bit more efficiency in mining. I'm just trying to spot exactly when the robo goes down. Usually the robo goes down between 6 and 7 minutes. Still chrono boosting. And then after he places the robo, and after he's almost saturated at his natural, place down the gateways because that's when you can afford them. And right now he has level 4 gateways and a robotics facility. Now it's important to know that 4 gate robo is very it's a very standard build, and you can actually expand off of it quite easily. However, what Rhett does not know is pretty much anything right now. He could have actually dive bombed an overlord in during like a standard scout time and saw those four gateways, but then Parting placed three more, which means he's definitely going for a very strong two base push. Uh, here comes the warp prison right after the immortals, and here comes the sentry last. Because if you build it first, it doesn't really give you much of a use, because you're going to be doing a strong push no matter what you see. Like this. What he does with his probes is he actually doesn't have them in his army. He just takes two of them and right clicks on a unit, and they'll follow that unit around the map. Some alright force fields, they weren't the best. Some more failed force fields. Could have trapped quite a bit more. Now these force fields are really nice. And you can see there that he almost lost a sentry. Good Zerg players, when they have a few units trapped between your force fields, they're gonna try to target down the sentry because it's the most vulnerable and expensive unit to target. So if you have the warp prism, uh, which you should if you're popping in this build, you can be able to just pick it up real quick. Like do a hot pickup like that. Base is under attack. If there is a counterattack, you don't need a whole lot to hold it off. I'm going to go ahead and watch this counterattack and then come back to 11.30, continue talking about the push. But I'm going to watch this just so that you can see how they handle something like so. So there are quite a few units here, uh, roaches that is, and they'd be able to kill this army pretty easily, but they're uh, on an A move because Rhett has to focus all of his micro on this side of the map. So they become really handy. And now they're forced to retreat. He could either lose all of them or try to save his main back at home. So let's come back to about level 1130. And watch the push. Usually with a push like this, you'll see the third taken out first, if there is a third. Uh, an accessible third. On Ohana, the third wasn't targeted first. Probably because Rhett lost so much that there were, he could just kind of go into a natural and then make a little quicker. Rhett's being a lot smarter this game not to lose too many units to some of the preliminary force field walls. But he d isn't able to take out enough of the energy or get enough stuff so that by the time this engagement occurs, 
the really big engagement, Parting has well more than enough force fields to end up trading very, very cost efficiently. And you can see here, this is much, much too big of a disparity between the two players for us to survive. And here, you'll be able to see some more lift micro on the immortal. He does it over and over and over again. Doesn't really have to in order to win this push, but it makes it look even more convincing. And there you have it. The incredibly hard to hold, uh, very strong immortal sentry push. Usually, uh, as a final note before I end the video, usually when you reinforce, you're going to be getting a whole lot of stalkers, as um, you, they're just going to be the easiest way to get all of your income through your gateways into the battle on this side of the map. If you have any questions about this style of play, please ask me in the hockey forums. I will gladly answer them. And I hope you enjoyed this video on the Immortal Century All-In for PVZ off of 2Base.